Hi, we're at the Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain, wait a minute, Rocky Mountain Vintage Racing Association event. There we go. Hi, we're at the Rocky Mountain Vintage Racing weekend here at High Plains outside of Denver, High Plains Raceway. I got the chance to drive this beautiful, freshly restored Formula Ford. It's a Winkleman, about a 1972. Got a little Ford engine in it. It was in like the Pinto and the Ford Fiesta, that kind of engine, way back when. They make about 120 horsepower prepared for racing. Car only weighs 950 pounds. That, folks, is a real race car. And we're here for the Morgan Adams Foundation Race Against Kids Cancer. The whole event is raising money. We raised almost $200,000 last year to help children who've been struck by cancer. It's run by Joan Slaughter. Her daughter, Morgan Adams, died of cancer at the age of 10. And so that's why we're here. We've got a good cause and we're having a great time and I'm about to get this formula for it and try it out. Okay, we have done a brake adjustment to move the brake bias a little bit more forward. I think I was locking the rears too soon and it makes the car kind of assy. And they've added more rear shock absorber. Has these English Spax shocks. I'm trying to reduce trailing throttle oversteer by increasing rebound to keep the weight on the back longer entering a corner or anytime I go off throttle, reduce weight transfer, because it has a lot of tail happiness when you let off the throttle. Let's see. some clean laps right at the very beginning. Then when the track was dry and I could have really gone, there was a lot of traffic, but I still think we did okay. We got a new partner, Fezibo or Fezibo or Fezibo, and it's gonna help me. I've got text neck. It comes from looking down. We're always looking down at things. Well, a Fezibo desk is electrically adjustable for height. So you can put it up where you can look at your new cylinder head for your Honda 90cc motorcycle without having to look down at it. It's not good to always be looking down, people. Bring it up to a comfortable working height. It's a little bit like a lift for your car, but for your office. And so now you can work at a desk standing. You can work at the desk sitting. The Fezibo desk gives you options. Also comes in a lot of colors or in a natural wood finish. We're using one in the office for the computer. It keeps the monitor up at eye level so you don't get that text neck that I'm trying to cure. And we're using one out in the garage to put things at a comfortable working height. So it's good to be standing. It's good to have options. And the Fezibo standing desk gives you that option. Other options include an L shape or a V shape or shelves. And they're strong. They can hold hundreds of pounds depending on the model. It's a really cool, quality, smooth working project, and I can't wait to add one.
to my home. Let's get back to work at another comfortable working height. All right, we're leaving the paddock. Visor down, it's an open cockpit. It's breezy in there, but it keeps it cool. You can see the outboard shocks on the vintage Formula Ford. That's a sports racer up front. That's a Formula B. And in this race, that's me. I'm starting third overall. Another Formula B and Formula Fords. There's over 40 of them here on the uh, race weekend. Now we're starting another race from last place at the back of the grid, getting that jump. This is the front straightaway, cross the start finish. Look at that hole, stick it in there. Well, no, I don't think so. We're all friends here. Look at all those Fords. It's open wheels and you, you, you gotta respect. On the right there, that's a Formula B. Another one that's got a real strong engine, bigger wheels and tires, different class car. And you can see everybody respecting each other through here. I hold back, this is a fast kink, and I get a run through that kink, and it works. I pull right past that white car, and through turn three, A, and back out down the back straight. The Formula B misses a shift, and we are on the move. We're getting a little bit of a draft, but they're pretty far out ahead of us. Big pack of cars launch straight away to High Plains Raceway and pick up another one in the brake sound down the outside. Now this is turn four. I really like that outside my high speed corner. Down through five, picking it up, trying to get a run down the outside. Thirty four car misses a shift, comes back in the brake zone. This is Danny's lesson, turn six. Danny's lesson, tight corner gets really tight at the end, decreasing radius first gear. Now we're running up the straight. You see the power is pretty close, but everybody's running side by side. They slow themselves down a little bit. I catch up. High Plains Drifter is this big sweeping corner uphill and it goes into a hairpin. I dive bomb down the inside. The red car giving me a good run. Tuck it down all the way to first gear around the turn eight hairpin. And now we're heading down the bobsled to hell. That's what they call it at High Plains. Right back to the left and the S's. I stay flat, get inside another car through turn 10, my favorite turn on the track. Now we're heading for 11. This is another slightly decreasing radius hairpin. Getting up inside the 153. Look at those nice white steelies he's got on his Formula Ford. These cars are all from the 60s and 70s, or almost all. Pulling up another steep hill. Every time you go uphill at High Plains, you're coming into a tight corner. This is 13. Leads into the S's. On to the front straightaway. That's pit lane entrance off to the left. I get a little toe and a good run on the straight. Pick up another position across the start finish line. We're going down into turn one. Another fast kink. I like this. You can run third gear. Some guys go all the way down to second and I think it hurts the entry speed. Stick it underneath somebody into turn two. Long sweeper right with another slight decrease in radius. This kink turn 3A, very important, leading onto the back straight. Well that's 3A there. Got a good run, pull right by the 76 car. This Formula 4 I borrowed from Steve Mercer is really a nice car, just rebuilt by Pete Christensen, and it runs strong all the way down the back straight to 117 miles an hour. Feels like 200, I'll tell you folks. Through turn four, the fast king dropping into turn five. Look at that line of cars. We're catching them. We're gonna try to work our way through. Looking down the inside and take a straight line down the inside as the other driver sets up wide. I can go under him down to first gear and come out of Danny's lesson, turn six, pick up a position. Flat out up the hill, it's just on the limit. So much fun in the Ford. It's drifting all the way through here at the top of third gear at almost 90 miles an hour. Dive bomb into the hairpin, pick up one, but not two. Too risky trying to get that next one. I'd have been in the vortex of danger. Now we're heading back for the bobsled to hell once again. As we move them up to the pack, the cars and the drivers are faster and faster. Turn 10. Got to get on the power and it catches you and I get a little bit of a run. Where's he going to break? Early. Boom. I got him. You can see the nose drop in my car heading down into the brake zone. And we're up behind a Lotus Formula B. I was talking to that guy. He's had that car for many years, I think 30 or even 40 years. And it's the B cars have got bigger wheels. They've got a, about another, I think, 40 horsepower. They're a more expensive, faster class from the 60s and 70s. Really vintage look there. Makes me think of Jim Clark and all those guys as we come to start finishing. Trying to get 
to run on that Formula B. I'm wondering how quick he's going to be in this fast kink. I'm leaving a little room. Get on the power. Got a good run. Get a little bit of a draft. And now the power is going to pull away from me. As he goes down the straight, I'm doing all I can. I'm trying to get a snip, but I'm really too far back for a draft. You see how the cars line up? But they're going side by side up there. There's a lot of good racing in the Formula Ford class, especially out here with Rocky Mountain Vintage Racing. I'm fast through four, and I get under the Lotus, stick it down into five, pick up a position. Now we're with the lead pack. Maybe a little bit of a wide card there. These guys race hard. Now the high plane drifter, flat out third gear corner. I'm not going to lift. I'm not going to lift. I'm going to try and get up the outside of this car and stick it under him in the brake zone. Good late brake. Down to second. Down to first. Right around the inside. Working our way up. They're racing hard up there. That side by side slows them down. It gives me a chance to stay close. Now I'm hanging back because here in 10, I want to get a run through the corner and see if I can pop out. The guy ahead of me has the exact same idea. I take a look, but there's not room. Whoa, Vortex of Danger, but the outside car leaves him room. But that holds him up and gives me a good run, and I pick him up, gain another position. Climbing up turn 12 into Lucky 13. Very important last corner heading into the S's. These S's lead onto the front straight. Look, these guys are good. It's hard to keep up. I got a draft. I got a sniff of a draft as we come up the front straight, up into fourth gear, and no, I'm not close enough to try him into turn one. Fast corner, down to third, carrying speed, thinking about the brake zone on the inside of, of two, but nope, that doesn't work either. These guys are good. There's three of us ahead of me now. One is a more modern car. Formula Ford, yes, but it's in a different class. It's got real racing slicks, and I get a run on that red car. Steve's car good on the straightaway. The engine's pulling 6,500 RPM, which is high revs. This old push rod four, it's got a carburetor. Look like a two-barrel Weber downdraft. Now I'm sticking it under the 2.5 car, down into five. Got him, second gear. Only one car left in this race, the modern Formula Ford, and I won it. Down into Danny's lesson. I don't set it up quite as much. First gear, good, good run off the corner. You need to be carrying speed all the way out to that exit curve. Boy, look at him go down the straight. He's good off the corner on those sticky modern tires. Flat out through the kink. We're doing what? 80, 90 miles an hour on the exit. Into the turn eight hairpin. Boy, that thing sneaks up on you on top of the hill. It's blind. You don't see it until you're on it. And then back down. Through the bobsled the hill. My competition is good there. He is gone. But we run down through turn 10, my favorite turn on the track. Carrying speed into the hairpin. Turn 11, it's a little bigger corner. It's a clean second gear corner. Power about here. Power all the way to that curve using all the road. Up the hill, steep hill. Every time you're going steep up hill at high plains, you're going into a hairpin. Lucky 13, gonna use some curb on the left. Down through the S's, flat out in second gear, right on the limit, and up to third on the exit at 79 miles an hour. We've got nothing but clean air between me and that Ford, and I want him. We're leading our class. It's the vintage Formula Fords. We've got that outboard suspension. We've got treaded tires, just an older design. We got a good look here at that lead car. See, no shocks. They're mounted on rockers, and they're inboard. Less aerodynamic drag. The wind can go right straight through those little uh, control arms, and the shocks are inside out of the way, and they also have uh, a, a motion ratio that can uh, help with suspension tuning. Down the long straightaway, 112, 114, 116, 117. We just touched 117. I love this fast kink. Third gear, 5,800 RPM. Down to second, turn five. Dropping down the steep down here. There's lots of elevation change at High Plains Raceway. It's part of the fun of this track. Into Danny's lesson. I don't set it up quite as wide, but I'm thinking setting it up a little bit's a good idea because this guy's so good. Sorry I don't have his name. The guy's good, a good racer. And we're heading up High Plains Drifter. 
I'm flat on it, not going to lift, not going to lift. It's drifting all the way across the road. And then into the hairpin, leg brake dive bomb. You see the nose drop, you hear the tires scuff a little bit. First gear, little drifting, sliding those treaded tires up to second, up to third, flat out around the king. The key here, brake early, go back to power early and the road will catch you. It's very fast corner, faster than it looks. Into turn 11, I like to go entry speed and get down there early. Get to the power early and dig, dig, dig up that hill because the Fords are not terribly powerful, but they do accelerate well with their light, light weight. Barely more than a Harley. Okay, here we are coming on the front straight. Carry big speed over the hill. You can see it drift and get light up to third gear. Boom, 59.3, my best lap so far. But I want that modern Ford. I think I'm turning the same laps he is, but I am not going to have anything for him on his straights. He's getting good exits. This guy can try it. Through turn two, there's three, that important kink. We got a good run. Men's speed, 74 miles an hour. Up to fourth gear and just run. The, the, this Ford engine is fresh. You can hear it singing. 6,500 RPM from a push rod 1600 is really turning the motor. Hard on the brakes, I love this kick. Turn four at the end of the straight, 79 miles an hour through there. Set up for five, get a good run down the hill. Second gear, back to third. End of Danny's lesson, you gotta get in there hopping. You don't wanna get in too hot and slide the car. We're hooked up, oh, that's a good run. Minimum speed about 45, I'm not sure. Up to third gear. We're gonna go flat out. This Ford is on the limit through the High Plains Drifter. It's right on the limit, 88 miles an hour. We're moving. Little tweak there, little twitch. Hard brake and into the hairpin, down to first gear, trail the brake, late apex and drive off of there. Good lap so far. Up to third gear, down through the bobsled run. Brake early, finish braking, back to power, slide the car all the way to the curb. I'm using the road, that's hard to get to do. It doesn't feel like you're gonna make it, but if you do it right, you will. Second gear, this runs looking smooth. All the way, using all the road, we're on the curb. Gotta make this count, brake hard. You go over the top, the grip's not so good. Oh, I got a clean run. 6,300 on the exit, up to third gear. Not enough to get a draft. There's a start finish. Bang, white flag 58.5. That is right close to the lap record at High Plains for a vintage Formula Ford. We're on the last lap. I want to see if I can get the overall victory and beat this modern Ford. He's just out of range. It's tantalizing. Oh, I got a good run out of two. Through the kink at three. 75 miles an hour. Good run there, too. Don't, I wish I had enough to get up in that draft. Formula Fords love a draft because open wheels are not very aerodynamic. So when you're in the draft, you really get a pull. That's part of what makes the racing so good is you can stay close by drafting up on people on the straightaway. Through the fast kick, back to the right to set up turn five down the hill to Danny's lesson. Oh, he's right there. But I don't think I can outbreak him. I don't have enough. I could stick it down the inside and run into him, but that's not how we race. On the power, all the way across the road. All the way in the first, second, third, heading up that high plane strip. It's the last lap, flat on the gas, tickle the inside curve. Oh yeah, used all of it that time, 90 mile an hour. Into the hard brake zone, all the way down to first gear. Not quite within range, but man, he makes a good rabbit. He's just like the gold ring, just out of touch. Just trying to grab that downhill run through the king 74 miles an hour love that corner next hairpin oh man we're almost there second gear second gear digging up that hill this is really steep here up to third gear steep up the hill through 12 heading into 13 can't break too late it gets light over the top oh i got a wiggle down to second gear through the s's Modern Formula Ford out front, vintage Formula Ford. We take the checker and we win the class. Yeah, I'm happy about it. Great fun, starting from the back. Love the experience.
good fun on track. Bring it back to the paddock in one piece. Wow, that was a race. It's tight. Formula Ford rocks. Wow, we wrapped up my races today. And this is my sponsor benefactor here, Steve Mercer. Steve put me in one of his Formula Fords. It's a 1970. 1970 Winkleman, WDF2. Formula Fords are all built to the same formula. That's why they call it that. They have a Ford engine from the 60s that's tuned up to about 120 horsepower, 950 pounds or so. Steve, thanks a million for sure, letting me drive your no, car. No Steve was in this Crosley. Uh, what year is this car? Crosley 25 out of 73. And then this was mine for the last two days. Even got my name on it. All for a good cause for the Morgan Adams Foundation in the race against kids' cancer and for just having a good time. And guess what? Thanks to you, Steve, we won both races. 40 cars, roughly. 45. So thank you. From High Plains Raceway outside of Denver. See you next time.